The Goat House is back with my favorite picks and locks of NFL Week 8. We're here every Thursday with this video. Even have a college football pick at the end of it. Can't wait to break this down. Let's take a look at what I got. Starting with my favorite spread picks of Week 8. If you want to pick against a spread for every game and a score prediction, check out this video right here. It's the one of the most recent ones up on the channel. But I like the 49ers on Sunday Night Football. Minus 4 against the Cowboys. The 49ers seem to be every other week. They look really good. Back like the Niners. And then all of a sudden, like this, these are not the Niners. What's going on? And I think they're due for a good game at home, prime time. That's a key as well. They seem to play very, very well in recent years, even this year in prime time football. It's a great matchup against the Cowboys, who are also a little beat up. They really struggle on defense. They specifically struggle against the run. And to be even more specific, they struggle against those physical teams. And that's really the Niners' play style. It's their motto. So I think Jordan Mason has a good game on the ground. I think Kittle has a really solid game. Purdy bounces back. Um, you know, so the defense has been playing a little bit better than expected as well. So I think the game's kind of made for them to have success. So I think they win by uh, a touchdown or more. And I do like the Packers, which seems like it could be a little bit of a trap because when the lines are surprising, they seem to be traps. And you would think the Packers would be favored by a good six and a half or more against the struggling Jaguars. But yeah, I, the reason is the Packers are a little better at home than away, it seems. So they are away in this game, and they haven't had too much success against specifically man coverage. So I think that's the thinking here is the Jags run a lot of man. They're they're at home. They kind of maybe have some momentum from last week. But, I mean, you have to factor in that some of the Packers' offensive reps have been without Jordan Love. It's been with a just-coming-back-from-injury Jordan Love. He's only going to get better and they haven't seen the Jaguars man coverage, which is the worst pass defense in football. So I didn't know of issues with that Packers offense and their defense seems to be getting better and better. Jags were also in London for two weeks. So they have to come back and adjust from having that, you know, the, the different, obviously the different time zone there, uh, much different. So I think there's definitely an adjustment there. So I like the Packers rolling the Jaguars, even though I, I could see the Jags kind of starting to get going a little bit, but I like these two teams. Uh, as they are slight favorites, I think they should be favored by more, really. On to my straight-up locks. We've won the last six of these. And if you want picks for every single game with a couple other perspectives, a couple other guys, join me at our weekly pick show up on the channel for week eight. But Lions over the Titans, that should be a pretty easy one. The Lions look like the best team in football. The Titans are really struggling. They're sellers right now. They're selling some solid players. So... Don't see a way they win in Detroit there. Chargers playing a beat-up Saints team. It feels like the Chargers' pass offense been getting going a little bit. We know they can run the ball. The Saints' defense is starting to decline a bit, and we know the Saints' offense under Rattler can't do too much, and the Chargers' defense looks pretty solid. The Broncos are getting better. They're playing the Panthers this week. Panthers are really struggling especially lately, and now it's probably going to be, you know, it is going to be Bryce Young starting at quarterback against a good Broncos defense so in the anybody can score on the Panthers offense so the Broncos should have success there and the Ravens yeah it's a, it's a little tricky because it's a divisional game and they're switching quarterbacks Winston could give the Browns some fire it is in Cleveland but the Brown uh, the Ravens just got too much you know the Browns the best part of the Browns still is their running game the Ravens stopped the run very well and I know the Browns have a good defense but the Ravens offense is on fire they should have success in that game. I can see it surprisingly being close, perhaps. Not that that's my prediction, but I don't see the Ravens losing on that one. So those teams I'm calling locks to win. Quite a few of them for this week. Don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on because we have loads of NFL content here. Even more with the NFL trade deadline approaching. So join us for that great content. My total lock is going to be the Colts and the Texans under 46 and a half. And I have a couple other that I'll mention that I like, but this one I, I'm, I'm calling more of a lock than those ones. But yeah, under 46 and a half. I'm predicting less scoring than last time these two teams played this year. If you watched that game last time, it was a lot of explosive, big plays that were kind of early season things. The defense is slipping up a little bit. I'm not expecting those big plays. The Colts, Anthony Richardson trying to kind of get back in the mix of things here, and the offense just isn't looking as good right now, and they're playing a more polished Texans defense compared to the rest time. The last time around, I should say, Richardson had some crazy plays down the field, like elite plays against the Texans last time. I don't really see those happening this time. And then Nico Collins isn't there this time for the Texans, so that takes away explosive plays, takes away points. I pre predicted a 24-17 final, so this should 
should hit the under. And the key for both teams is running the football. Mixon's playing very well. The Colts struggle to stop the run. So that what does that mean? Drain, draining the clock. The Colts, same thing. The Texans, really good team. Really their only flaw is stopping the run sometimes. So that would be the Colts' best bet as well. So a lot of running clock, under 46.5. I like the Raiders and Chiefs to hit under 41.5. I'm not going to call it a lock, though, because the Chiefs honestly can get that themselves, but they are missing a bunch of explosive playmakers, so it should stay under. And the Chargers' Saints should stay under, but the Saints' defense is starting to decline while the Chargers' offense, your know, passing offense, is starting to improve. So, the, And that's at 39.5. The Chargers' offense, could that one really should stay under. I was you know, very close to calling that a lock. It's just you know, one flaw. The Chargers' offense is getting a lot better. Could they almost score all those points by themselves? Um, I mean, not quite, but you know, this one is my favorite one of the week. Teaser and parlay, always adding more last second options and a lot more on our Twitter as well, or X links pinned in the comments for that. But here's some teaser options. I mean, you can pair the four listed here, or you can, if Jaden Daniels plays, you could put the commanders in there and take one out that you don't like. So I would recommend picking four. You could do all five if Jaden Daniels plays, but Broncos drop that down to minus two and a half. They're going to win this game against Bryce Young and the Panthers. Really bad matchup for the Panthers. Great matchup for the Broncos because we know the Broncos play good defense. They're going to create turnovers against the Panthers and anybody can score on the Panthers so the Broncos whose offense is improving should be able to. Chargers I see them bottom line winning by a field goal against the Saints are really struggling on both sides of the ball right now the Chargers feel like they're getting better on offense and they already have really good defense. Packers I definitely have winning against the Jags if you do plus three and a half I mean they're not going to lose by more than a field goal we would think and the Giants I think their defensive line keeps the game close on Monday night against the Steelers uh, but yeah, the Steelers should beat them, but I just don't see them running up on the score score on them. So 14 and a half feels really safe and it's not terrible odds. And then again, I absolutely love if Jaden Daniels plays the commanders at plus seven and a half because they're at plus, you know, around plus three right now. So if he plays, I absolutely love that one. It's a must use as a teaser leg. Big odds parlay. We actually tweeted a big odds parlay last week at the day of you know, Sunday and it hit. It was beautiful. So this is what I picked out. You have to kind of add some some close to 50-50 games in, in here to make it uh, have those solid odds. But Packers, which it could be a little bit of a trap game, but they're so much better than the Jags. The offense should be explosive. The Jags coming back from a two-week trip in London. Uh, Texans, Falcons, which the Falcons should handle business. I know the defense has been struggling, but the Bucks missing those two top receivers, and the Falcons should have no problem on offense in that game. The Jets, which it's been... A little tough for them, but the best game they played this year was against the Patriots. Here they go again, and the Chargers definitely should handle business. So we have a couple that feel like locks and a couple that you feel like could maybe go either way, but you have to take the risk here uh, You know, with, with uh, some of those pretty solid odds for some of these, some of these games here. So um, there's a teaser for you guys and a big odds parlay. Always going to have more on our Twitter as well. My favorite anytime touchdown picks. Been doing very well this year with these, and I love these ones for this week. We'll have more prop picks on our Twitter. But Saquon Barkley, he's going to score at least once. He's been on fire, and he's playing a weaker run defense in the Bengals. Joe Mixon, he's been on fire as well since he's came back. He dominated the Colts last time. That's the key against the Colts, run the football. No Nico Collins to take a touchdown away from him. Tyreek Hill already hyping all of us up because – He's saying we're back. You know, count on us to be back and be productive. I think he'll burn by the Cardinals defense. This one score. He actually has positive odds too, which is great. Jordan Mason, perfect matchup for him and the Niners. You know, a physical running back going against the Cowboys. He's going to punch one in. Kenneth Walker's been great as well. And the only negative about the Bills, who he plays, the only negative is their run defense. So they'll make sure to pound the ball to Kenneth Walker. So uh, best Plus money options, Tyreek Hill, which I love to score. Drake London, I love to score. I mean, he always dominates the Buccaneers. He scored last time right away against the Buccaneers. It's a great one. Jaden Reed, uh, his speed might be a little too much for that man coverage. Jaguars, a struggling Jaguars secondary. Uh, Josh Allen, I like those first three more than the next two, but Josh Allen's a good one. And a little bit, and one with a little bit more odds, Cade Otten should be the number one target for the Buccaneers playing a weaker Falcons defense. So I, this is, we've done good on these this year, and these, this is probably my favorite week 
uh, for, for picking specific touchdown scores. So really excited. My college football pick of the week. We're going to go with Notre Dame minus 12 and a half against Navy. And we do have more picks and a parlay on our Twitter for X subscribers. So you can check that out as well. Parlay has been doing pretty solid this year, but three and one on this one pick in this video. Last week was our first loss. I almost went Miami, Ohio. We would have been four and zero. Oh. I mentioned that in the video. I like them as well, but I like Notre Dame and it's a little tricky because they've been underwhelming at times this year, losing to NIU. I mean, they look good against A&M. They either dominate teams or they're just not playing up to their potential and they are away against Navy and Navy is really solid this year. It's one of their better teams ever. And they have, they've had worse teams that have played Notre Dame closer in this, but man, I'm feeling Notre Dame in this one. I think a big thing here for Navy, very good team this year they got. But a big thing is they have really not been tested. And that that's an issue, like not being tested for this game. We saw that earlier in the year with Purdue going against Notre Dame. Their only game they played was Indiana State. They looked flawless. They only incompleted one pass. And all of a sudden, as soon as you see a much better team, nothing works like you expect it to. So that's kind of the issue here. They haven't seen Notre Dame yet and nowhere near that team who actually has one of the better defenses in the country in Navy's run game, obviously can cause some issues, but Notre Dame will have a game plan. They play every note. They Notre Dame plays Navy every single year, so they should be prepared for it. And their running game is something. So I think they pull away in this one. I really think it's because they're, it's they're they're the better team. I mean, they win by at least two, two touchdowns at the very least and they're favored by under that but mainly because navy just they're not prepared for this i wish they had a game against anything near you know notre dame i memphis is probably the best one but they give up a lot of points so uh, just things that normally work no problem because the competition they play just aren't going to work and they have to turn to option b and you know things like that so it's just kind of going to be an experience they haven't had this year if they even lost the game this year to a better team like they and there's a chance they could win this game because notre dame kind of plays down to competition sometimes but uh they they, sh they should have no problem here but it's going to be a, how they start and they, they kind of had some slow starts at times this year looking at georgia tech last week but then they end up rolling against them and the least amount of points Georgia Tech has scored this year, you know, was last week against Notre Dame as well. So that defense, even though it's beat up, it's legit. I like them to cover. There's a couple other favorites that I do like as well, and I'm putting together a parlay, and that's usually uh, out on for X subscribers anytime between later today and, and before the games on Saturday. So you can check that out. But let me know your guys picked what you agree with, what you disagree with. Uh, if you want, like, you know, want to add something, if if you were, uh, you know, putting money on something, let me know in the comments. Always curious to see that stuff. Check out our other videos, loads of content, more trade deadline videos coming as well. So, like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Be much, much appreciated. It's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.